you would think that something like a Civil War cartridge pouch would be pretty easy to find a pattern for, but that's not really the case. I hunted around and I found people selling pieces of them and originals and reproductions, but not really by just selling a pattern. So I kind of had to devise my own a little bit uh, from a not very good reproduction. It actually wasn't quite the right size. Um, so I had to alter that. But I came up with something relatively accurate to what I can find. Um, now, there's a lot of variation on these as, um, in particular, as the war went on, requirements relaxed are just flat out they didn't care anymore and the contracts got to be more and more um, we just want quantity we don't care about the particulars so even among original items there's quite a bit of variation and this is going to be in the category of close enough but I can't guarantee absolute historic accuracy for the people that are going to be out there really nitpicking. But anyway, there's a lot of pieces to this. Um, some of the pieces I cut out of um, this black leather are actually going to be the small pouch that goes on it. And then I've got some other pieces that are going to be straps of various sorts. And then the main pouch itself, which has two flaps on it and a back piece as well as um, some little tab pieces that uh, form the shape of the inner uh, pouch flap. So we'll get to that in a bit. But I've got a little bit of cutting and such still to do here, and I've got to sky some pieces. Um, in particular, a lot of these straps they may not have been skived originally. It's, yeah, you can if you want. You don't have to. But again, I think that's something that some manufacturers did and others didn't. But I think it makes everything a little smoother and a little better to skive the ends of those straps off. So when they go through and they're attacked in place, you don't have a big lump of leather in there that you just catch on. So I'm going to go ahead and go to the extra steps. Um, I'm also going to need to do a lot of edge beveling that again, depending on the quality you're trying to replicate, may not be necessary. Um, the admittedly poor quality example that I'm working from um, did not have edges beveled. It wasn't made from harness leather, which was one of the requirements earlier in the war. Uh, it was a waxed leather, or harness leather. And then they kind of just said, well, just whatever works as it went on. So yeah, it gets a little bit more complicated than it needs to be. Now a couple pieces um, that are a little strange. Like this one has a teardrop shape hole where it pops over a um, a button stud. And I punched a quarter inch hole right there. But then to make the teardrop, I'm actually going to punch a very small hole, um, which is a sixteenth uh, of an inch. And then I'm going to cut out those pieces in between. I'll just use a wood chisel for that. You got this little uh, flat wood carving chisel. And it's very handy for things like this because you don't have to get run the risk of running past the end and making a spot that's going to tear. So that's a, a little trick on doing things like that. 
Also the same on the uh, buckle shapes. Is, uh, they're going to hold the buckles onto the bottom of the bag. Uh, you can punch these out with the bag punch, which is the tool specifically made for it, sometimes called an oblong punch, or you can just punch two holes at each end and cut between them with a knife or a chisel. Uh, again, wood chisels work really well for it. Even bigger ones like you can buy at a hardware store. Okay, now all my pattern pieces here, I've got various little notes and marks on them, some of which are probably confusing even to me, but um, I've got dotted lines for stitch lines. I've got fold lines marked straight. Uh, I've got a spot here where I'm going to be v-gouging out the back side of it. Uh, and then places where I'm going to skive the edges. Like this long edge here, skive it down. Um, and on several other things. And on a lot of the ends of the straps, I'm going to skive them uh, where they're going to go into the bag. So there's going to be a lot of that. And probably not going to show it on camera. But for the most part, uh, the way that I do skiving is with my round knife. There's a lot of other tools for it. There's specific skiving knives. There's uh, tools like what's called the safety beveler. Um, a French edge skiver even is specifically made for it. But like I said, I just like using a nice sharp round knife to do the job. And on some of these, I'm going to skive a good bit back. Most of the straps, I'm just going to skive right at the end, just to taper it off on the inside of the bag so it doesn't make a, a lump. Um, I've beveled a lot of the edges on all these pieces. I've got things skived off where they're going to be uh, so we don't have bumps. Probably more than I needed to because these were mass-produced items that didn't have a lot of details like that. But depending on the manufacturer, I think, that made them. Uh, like I said, from the research I've done, there's a lot of variation. Uh, but some of the pieces, like these pieces are going to be the sides of the pouch, I did not bevel the edges. And I didn't do that on purpose because this is going to be a um, box corner stitch. And I want it to wind up square. If you bevel the edges, it may want to wobble back and forth uh, a little bit more. It may still do that depending on how we punch the holes. But anyway, everything here needs to be dyed black because the whole bag is black. I'm going to dye it inside, outside, all of it. It's going to be entirely black. And for that, I'm just using black oil dye. Uh, for a finish, I'm going to do um, something a little different. Instead of the resoline that I normally use, I'm going to use a wax type finish. Now I think I can point out that um, you could still skip all these dyeing and finishing steps that are kind of messy if you buy um, drum dyed harness leather or some sort of waxed leather like that. But the problem with that is on if you're not making a bunch of these or a bunch of different accoutrements that are very similar. Um, I've got three different weights leather of leather here. I've got five to six, I've got eight to nine, and I've got some three to four for the inner pocket. Um, so that's three different sides of leather, and harness leather is pretty expensive. So if you're not making a bunch of these, if you're only making one or two, like what I'm doing here, uh, yeah, it might be better to just go ahead and do the messy steps. Now, as I mentioned, for my finish, I'm going to use, um, I refer to this as trees wax, but it's basically it's beeswax. Uh, pine rosin and olive oil to thin it out a little bit and it makes this kind of gooey uh, waxy substance it's a great waterproofer uh, but I'll use that I'll spread it all over this mostly with my fingers or a paper towel and it's gonna make an absolute mess but then I'll take and use a heat gun and soak it in. There we go. A little bit of time with a heat gun.
Then we've got a piece of waxed, waterproofed leather. And I just gotta do that to the rest of them. Now I'm just gonna kinda finish edges on pieces as I go. I grabbed some token all off the shelf here. And I'm just gonna finger paint some of that on there as I go. Uh, again, the originals may not have had anything like this done to them. I'm just doing a little bit better job. Um, up to you what you think is necessary. Uh, definitely the low-end reproductions that I've seen don't have any sort of finishing on the edges. But anyway, this whole project is going to be hand-stitched. For all those purists out there that are actually just jealous of sewing machines and want everybody to hand stitch things to know their pain. Um, yeah, this one's for you. Because uh, I'm going to be stitching this all with a waxed linen thread. So I'm punching, I've got this um, diamond hole chisel punch that I'm using. And basically, this one does about seven stitches to an inch. Um, and I've got a single one. Uh, trick with all of these, with any tool that punches through leather, is take it and polish it. Polish it on a, a, even if it's just have a strop, it's worth the time to polish it up until it's smooth um, and get kind of round out some of the um, transitions on it and polish that chrome down because then it doesn't stick in your leather as bad. If you punch the hole, you'll be able to pull it out a lot easier. Most of these first few things that I'm going to put on are just putting straps in. And a very traditional way of putting straps in is to have a hole punch through the leather, the strap goes through it, and then stitches in place. Then your strap is not pulling up against your stitches, it's pulling sideways to it. And stitches are a lot stronger with sheer force than they are with pull-out force. And you don't tear your leather as bad. Uh, so that's the idea behind how to attach it like this. But it's just going to be a bunch of hand stitching. Put these little straps on. And I'm basically doing kind of the lazy way of doing a saddle stitch for it. Uh, you could do the two needle saddle stitch on these if you want. Uh, if you want to spend the time figuring out your pieces of thread and so on. But I'm just going to do the stitch down, stitch back, stitch down again type of saddle stitching. So this is going to be the inner pocket of the bag. And then this part is basically the closure for the flap. The flap will come down. And there'll be another piece, which is around here somewhere. This one will be attached to that flap, and it just tucks through there to hold it shut. So that's going to be my next piece to sew on. And this is why I skived off the ends, so you don't have as much of a bump inside where those are going to be. Now the bottom part of the box where the buckles are going to attach all that, um, around that we need to have some folds that need to be a V gouge uh, to make them fold across those lines. I've got a mark here in my pattern and I've got a wide double line there. I'm going to gouge out between them basically. So let's go ahead and I don't have my scratch all here. So let's go ahead and mark some spots that I can kind of connect the dots there. And then I can kind of draw between those spots I just made. And gouge that out. I'm just going to use some chalk to mark this. You can also use silver markers or silver pins to mark on black leather. But um, I've got this laying here. 
And that gives me something that I can see a straight line to gouge. Now the V gouges, this one, they have like a, a cover on them that kind of sets the depth. So you hopefully don't go too deep. And I will be gouging quite a ways through these. Um, I should actually go all the way to the edge so it folds better. Yeah, I would say I'm going probably about three quarters of the way through it. I'm going quite a ways down through the leather. Um, not leaving a whole lot if you look at the edge. Um, two thirds to three quarters, depending on exactly where I'm at in the groove. On stuff like this, it's dyed black. If you ever, if it'll start to, you get past what you've dyed and into the surface you haven't dyed, okay, you're fine. If you start seeing dye again, then you're almost all the way through it. And you definitely want to stop. Another way that I found to make these a little wider and make them work a little bit better sometimes is to take um, the V-gouge along and then use a French edge skiver. To just kind of widen that out a bit. Because the V-gouge, it's not... 90 degrees doesn't work quite right until you get almost all the way through the leather. And that can be problematic because, of course, you lose a lot of your strength. Got our box shape nice tight corners now another place I'm going to kind of differ from my um, low quality replica I used to come up with my pattern um, is that I'm going to do this seam where the two back where the back piece and the flap overlap rather than having them right sides together and stitched and then turned back around because um, I just I think that's a stronger way to do the same seam. It's probably a little bit more confusing to line up, which is more than likely why they didn't do it. Um, the whole piece could probably be cut out of almost a single piece as well. turn around and I'm just gonna overlap them about a quarter of an inch or so and stitch those together and this fella is just gonna get saddle stitched I don't believe in any weird odd chicanery of twisting threads or anything like that whenever you're saddle stitching. I think all that is just extra. And if anything causes more friction on the thread and more easily worn out over time. So gimmicky stuff like that generally doesn't seem to add anything to my stitching. So I just pay attention to doing the same thing every time. Doing one needle in from one side, usually in from the front of the, the grain side of leather. And then I make sure I pull that thread down or towards me. And I put the other th needle through on top of it. And as long as you do that each time, you're going to wind up with a stitch that um, looks nice and neat and clean without any weird odd uh, twisting or twirling threads together or magical incantations or anything like that that's supposed to make your stitches better. Just make sure you pull the thread out of the way and you don't pierce um, 
through the thread that's already in the hole. And like I said, you wind up with a nice neat looking stitch that way. Now, I'm putting these little buckles on there are how you attach the shoulder strap onto this bag. And one thing that's gonna make life a little easier is making sure that your slot that's cut for the tongue of the buckle is big enough that the tongue of the buckle fits in entirely. And what I mean by that is um, just a regular bag punch on these. I have to usually punch a little bit more out because when I go to fold it around, it doesn't quite fit all the way around that tongue of that buckle. So this needs to be just a little longer and maybe just a little wider to really fit these particular buckles. Um, a lighter weight buckle, maybe it wouldn't be as big a deal. But then you'll be able to fold it nice and tight around the buckle uh, bar and everything will fit together a little bit better. But like I said, it just uh, takes a little bit of adjustment sometimes. Because not all buckles are exactly the same. And I just use my bag punch to kind of chew out around the hole and make it a little bit wider, a little bit longer. And then it should fit the buckle a little bit better. See, then I'm able to pinch this down real tight right around that buckle without any sort of gap there because now I've got enough room for the buckle tongue. Now the rivets I'm going to use on this bag are a number 14 copper rivets and I'm using those to put the buckles on. I'm going to use those to put some of the belt straps on. There's going to be a few places I use um, these copper rivets. Now the buckle shapes are, they look like they're totally backwards to what they need to be because the strap's actually going to be coming from this direction. The shoulder strap's going to go under, under a, um, a strap keeper across here and then it comes down to this buckle. And so that looks like it's finding the wrong way. But what I actually need to be is this buckle folds back and the strap goes over top of it and buckles through it with the extra strap left behind it. So the way that this strap attaches is a little bit different than you'd expect and therefore the buckle looks backwards. But as usual with setting copper rivets, you set the burr down, you trim off some excess rivet, you leave about um, as much as the rivet is wide sticking up out of it. Try and not shoot that across the room. And then you can use either a ball peen hammer or the peening tool on this to peen out that rivet. I usually do a little bit of both. Oh, I also punch these holes a little bit wider because thicker leather um, that I'm using for these. You might be able to get away with some five to six on these straps. Um, but I decided to go with the eight ounce because I want the extra oomph that you're gonna have for something that's gonna be a, a strap that holds up the bag. Now the next piece that gets riveted on are these straps. And these are gonna be, um, if you wore it on your belt, as a belt bag. And the originals came with usually both, sometimes not. Sometimes it depended what part of the war and what manufacturer you're dealing with. Um, I think. Oh, let's do this the other way around. Well, let's go ahead and put these in from the outside. It'll look a little better that way. The other one, it doesn't matter because they're going to be covered by the strap. But. This one, we'll go ahead and put the burr on the inside.
All right, now I did not on my pattern mark where I punched the holes for these because I knew that it's probably going to change a little bit depending on how I did this seam and various things along the way. So trying to get it marked in the perfect place was just going to be um, a little bit too much trouble. It's a lot easier to once we got all this set. Then we can go back and punch that hole. Real simple like. Just lay that down, make sure it's about straight, and grab your hole punch. There we go. And those are both riveted and stitched on the example that I found. So, I'll go ahead and rivet them in place and then punch a few holes and do some stitching around the edges. All right, and just like that first bit of stitching I did, I'm gonna start in about four holes from the end. I'm gonna stitch up to the end, around and back, and then back down to where I started and that will provide my back stitching. It's basically like doing a saddle stitch. It's just a little lazier because I'm not doing two needles. Uh, but yeah, well, we'll get th through this then. All right, now that I got uh, both those sewn on. Next, we're gonna put on our part that holds the belt loops and it basically feeds up from the center here. Or it holds on the, the shoulder strap. It's a keeper loop for the shoulder strap. Basically, same width as the bag. Now these were just stitched. Got like a V of stitches here almost, and then a stitch on each end. Um, again, since it goes through the bag, it's making it a lot stronger. But I also have, um, I had to do those rivets underneath first because you can't rivet through this because there's gotta be a strap going through. So anyway, that's an important factor to remember. Do these, then those, and don't rivet through the whole thing. Okay, on the example I had, they also sewed in the flap partially when they did this, uh, at least right here in the center. So I'm going to do my outside ones on each end here, and then I'm going to do those inside ones and punch through this as well, but then I'll have to... Um, figure out how to do all this in the right order because this also has some pieces sewn in the side to make it um, hold its shape. Now these little fish shaped pieces actually go on the edge of um, this flap and they're going to stitch on there with what's basically a box corner stitch. A um, little bit different stitch the way you do it. Uh, so yeah, that's why I did not bevel the edges on that. I did round them out a little bit on this, uh, just to smooth them out some. But what we're going to do to attach those in is I'm going to start with punching the holes about an eighth inch from the edge, but I'm not punching straight down through it. I'm going to angle back and I'm aiming to punch through and get right to where it comes out right at the corner where the leather meets the board down there. 
Not sure how to do this and still be able to see it on camera. But I kind of start it in and then sort of twist the tool and the leather piece lifts up and drive it in at an angle. And of course, you can do this with an awl too. And just punch all your all your holes with an awl. Um, it's a little tricky to do though. Especially on little pieces like this where you're sitting there trying to get past your fingers. Now I'll make the same number of holes on this one. But instead of being an eighth inch from the edge, these are going to be um, at a 45 degree angle, but they have to hit an eighth inch on the back side of this from the edge and then come in. So I'm actually going to go, because again, this is about eight ounce leather, I'm going to go about a quarter of an inch in from the edge. And we're just going to mark a little bit here, real gentle like. And I'm going to do the same thing there. And I want four holes, three holes, three holes. I want ten holes on this. All right. So we're just going to do it the old-fashioned way. Let's see. Let's go through hole number five in here. Hole number five on there. And they should line up just about right that we're going at a 45 through the edge. And basically we're still doing a saddle stitch. On longer curves it'll make a difference that um, you want to have stitches on the inside of the curve closer together but this one should be short enough to get away without it and on the straight corners that we're going to be doing later it doesn't matter till we get down to the very corner of it now right in the middle there I didn't get the uh, it lined up just right uh, when I was punching through the small piece so I'm just going to take that and clean it off a little bit And take that kind of edge down a bit. Then we got our, our part that helps shape the flap on there. Now we got to do one more of those and we'll have to do that same box stitch when we put the main body of the bag finally together. All right, I hit my angles a lot better on that one. It's going together better. I'm sure there, there's a more complicated way to do this that would make these corners easier like tacking it to a wooden form or something like that um, and punching through with an awl but for what I'm doing I don't need to make any jigs or anything I just need to get the job done it's only if I ever have to make more of these that I'll have to worry about stuff like that now I'm gonna go ahead and punch the holes for these pieces that are going to go through this strap. I could have bunched them earlier, but I kind of figured out what I'm going to do now. Uh, but yeah, we're going to punch through those. Just secure that on this side. I'm going to punch one more hole on that end of each one. The reason I didn't punch it till now is because it also goes through this piece, which is going to be on the other side. And what I did, and what I'm going to do, is this lines up, and we've got our uh, side panels here. And we're going to line up our side panel. The bottom of the where the V groove is, we're going to line up with the edge of it. 
and the top of it lines up about where this box corner hits. Um, so that tells us where this particular bit's going on the bag, pouch, box, whatever. Um, and then I can punch some holes for it as well. You could glue this on to help hold it in place while you're doing all this. I'm just going to go ahead and punch in some holes and then I'll stitch it to hold it in place. I'm pretty confident in my ability to line up stitching holes. You should probably glue it if you're not. And then once I've got this stitched, I'm going to punch with an awl, I'm going to punch through that V and through this piece. Now when I laid this out, I made sure that I'm crossing this seam at least with a couple stitches to help reinforce that so this can't tear loose ever, basically, because it's got to tear all of that up. Um, so not just even tearing through the leather, it has to another line of stitching running across it perpendicular. It should be good and secure. Alright, now because it's not really laying flat anymore because of these pieces I sewed on the sides, I might have been able to punch the holes and then sew them on later. Uh, might have made it easier. But I'm just going to go ahead and use an awl to punch these the rest of the way through. Since I've got them started, I'm only going through the one piece. Just watch where your fingers are behind it. And this basically attaches the two flaps together. The inner flap and the outer flap and then kind of forms them both around those two little round pieces. So that the flap folds shut over the cartridge box. Now I still have a couple more pieces laying around on the table that I need to attach before I uh, put the sides on the bag and actually close it up. That'll be kind of the last thing. Uh, I've got the part that's the uh, closure flap. It's going to stitch onto the back of the uh, main flap and it's actually going to pop onto a button stud. That's another part that I still need to put on. And then of course I've got the uh, pieces that make the second pocket to stitch on. So let's get started on all of that. First off, let's, I've got a couple holes marked here that are going to be kind of first and last in this line of stitching that I had marked on my pattern piece. And I'll be able to line this piece up with those. And then punch through all of it. You can mark a straight line if you want. Um, I'm just going to eyeball it. Now let's get that stitched on. Uh, you could also just put some basting tape or glue or whatever. Stick that on there if you wanted to. Might make life a little easier. Now the button studs that I've seen on these. Um, you could use a regular round button stud. Uh, I bottom of them, what I saw had more of a spike shape so I'm using this kind of um, I think they're called tree shaped spikes uh, and I'm gonna just put a little dab of super glue in there because this is a, a screw back one I couldn't find any that were uh, rivet back style which is my personal preference on spikes and studs we're gonna put that together And hopefully never have to take it apart because now it's got super glue on it and that should function as our closure for when the bag wraps around and it pops onto that spike like thus 
and you pull it off to open up the bag. Last major thing to do before I put the sides onto it, or it's time to put on the little front pouch. Now these I will stick on with some basting tape. I'm just gonna put a line of it from where one mark that I've got on there. And over about to the other mark that I've got on there. I just got some little dots. I don't know if they're even visible on the camera. Um, I just marked them when I marked my pattern. And I should have them marked on my pattern pieces. I'm just going to put two straight lines of basting tape across there. And this one, which is, uh, if you think about it, this is the top of the bag, the opening, and this is the bottom. Um, that's going to be for the flap of the pouch. And this stuff doesn't stick great to this waxy leather. But it should stick well enough to hold it while I'm stitching it together. And we're going to pop our little flat piece on there from one side to the other. We're going to take this piece and we're going to flip it upside down. And it's actually going to attach on right like that. And it's going to be the problem child, I think, on trying to get it to hold. So let's go ahead and punch those first. And I'm going to punch a hole just past the end. And then a straight line all the way across and then one just past the end on that side. Yep, both of those popped loose as soon as I got the holes punched. Which means I'm just going to pull that basting tape off so it's not my way and I'll just line up the holes as I stitch. Alright, now I'm just going to stitch that piece onto there, this piece up onto here. And once I've got that done, I'll come back and punch the holes for the sides. Alright, now that I've got uh, these two lines stitched together, I'm going to fold this back. These basically fold, these sides fold in. And kind of an accordion fold sort of setup. Um, and I'm going to line those up and just outside of where this uh, flap is, I'll put another line of stitches and basically line up this stitch line with the bottom of that. And there's bottom corner does kind of hang out and open. Uh, it shouldn't hurt. Uh, if you really want, you can put a couple stitches across there too. But uh, the examples that I've seen don't have that. Just to show you about the speed that hand stitching can go at once you get good at it. Um, it's still not going to ever come anywhere near a machine stitch. But once you get the idea down, hand stitching doesn't actually take forever like it does when you're new to it. And like I said, don't make it complicated. Just pull that thread back, tuck the other one through the same hole, start the next stitch. Pull them all tight as you go. Alright, and at the end, just back stitch a few holes. And I always keep a pair of pliers around for when I'm back stitching. Because it's going to get pretty tight going through those holes, three or four threads. And try to pull the needle straight out whenever you pull it with a pair of pliers because otherwise you could break your needle off real quick. Okay, now that the pouch, the uh, second pouch is done, basically it's just a gusseted pouch like that, flap folds over, this tucks down through there to hold it closed. Real simple. Um, so of all these pieces I had on the table, I've got pouch and uh, 
buckle shapes and belt loops and the inner flap with these little side doohickeys and the closure. All of it's put together except for these two. Now these are going to be the side pieces that are actually going to turn it into a box. So next step is punching the holes for those and those are also going to be box corners like I did on these pieces here. Which is why I'm hand stitching all of this is because these pretty much need to be hand stitched in. And they're going to fit on the sides here. That's going to come up and then this is going to come up. So I need to punch the holes for box stitching all of that. That's going to be the next thing, but we're going to do it basically the same way as we did before. Um, this side, they're going to be punched through about an eighth inch from the edge. And this side, they're going to be, or and all the way around, they're going to be probably about a quarter of an inch from the edge. And both of them are going to be angled about 45 degrees. Yeah. There, there, there. So let's go ahead. Let's mark our center points down here. Between our two um, grooves, I can see the, the edge of the grooves here on the side of the leather. I'm just gonna kind of center it up between those. I'm gonna give it a mark here and a mark there. And I should wind up with eight holes right across there. All right, looks like these last few up here after I get past this and I've got all this to deal with, I'm just going to do that with an awl because that's getting complicated. So we can get it stitched in and I'll get the front part of it laid out. Um, on this side. And get that figured out. But after that, no, we'll just go ahead and do some all punching to finish this all up while we're stitching. That's a lot of hole punching, but basically the idea is that when you do these box corners like this, they're folded. You've got to wrap that leather around the corners. And so there's going to be a gap here where it doesn't line up. But that actually is going to line up this these holes correctly. Or at least it should. Um, but like I said, there's going to be a big gap there on that corner. So I'm basically going to sew it in three separate sections. And now there's going to be a lengthy process of stitching again. These are box corners, so it's going to kind of stitch a little different as it goes sort of at a 45 degree angle through that corner. But if you catch your holes right, the needle should go through nice and straight and even um, without too much trouble. But this is going to be a go sit on the couch and sew for a while type of project. But generally the basic idea, stitch down to there, kind of stop, stitch across here and stop, and then stitch all the way up the back. And up here I'm going to have to actually punch the holes through from here with an awl, but I'll have all this stitched together so it'll be pretty much held in place by then. So yep, next is just a lot of time sitting here stitching away. So oh, I'm going to turn the camera off and I'll show back up when I've got some of this done. Alright, I'm going to call this passable. It's not something I'd turn in for competition at a leather guild show or anything, but it's more than enough for what we're doing here. I'm going to go ahead and put some token oil on here to burnish these edges a little bit. Clean it up some with the edge burnisher. Be able to kind of square these corners up a bit. And even things out some. With the edge burnisher. Good. Pop down like that. 
I still gotta do the other side, but you can see how it all closes up. How that inner flap closes over it. Now, one more side. I'll have it all done. Now I'm actually one hole off on numbers on this one. So I'm just gonna go ahead and punch through and make another. With an all. Just like that. And it actually, it's easier to stitch if you punch the holes with the awl, I think. Um, so in the future I might, if I do more box corners like this, I might wind up punching more of them with the awl. Just start a few of them and from then on, punch with the awl. One more line of stitching, and this is one that I have to punch some holes up here, and then we should be done with it. All right, the strap for the bag. I'm going to just go ahead and include it in this video. Um, it's basically just a 2 inch by 64 inch strap, and then I'm going to take about 6 inches down on it. Um, make myself a little bit of a mark so I know where I'm at. And I'm going to go down that far. I'm going to taper it to one inch and it's kind of like taper it out. Uh, so I'm just using my strap cutter. I've got it, since it's a two inch strap, I've got it set at one and a half inches. And I can just kind of run on down and take a half inch off the outside there. Down about to my mark. Flip it over and do the same thing this way and just keep that half inch piece in there. can do it right down the same way about to the mark I made and then just uh, Tapered off, and then from then on, I'll use this piece to mark all of these. Throw a strap end point on there. Again, should be about one inch. And then we're going to go two inches up and then a few spots here. Where we're going to punch some sizing holes for our buckle. Let's do four of them. Most of them I've seen have had four of them on them. Now, I'm just using veg tan leather for this. Um, as far as I can tell, historically accurate, there were a bunch of different leathers that these were made out of. Most common being, I think because it was cheap, what was called a waxed leather, which seems to be a finished split. It was rough on both sides, and one side of it was waxed so heavily with black wax that it looked smooth. I'm just using, like I said, regular veg tan strap that I had. Well, I'm going to do the same thing to the other side of the strap, and then I'm going to bevel edges. And all the same normal steps, dye it, finish it, finish the edges up. And once you're done with that, 
Um, it's a strap. I'll show you how it goes on the bag. All right, now most of these straps I've seen have only been black on the one side, so that's why I finished this one up. And basically, we're just going to feed it in through the back of the pouch here with the black side to the front of the pouch. And then it should wrap around these buckles. And I'm going to go all the way to my last hole in it. And that holds it against there. And you pull it tight up against that. And you do the same thing with the other one. So like I said, the buckles are a little bit counterintuitive as they're kind of backwards, but that keeps the strap underneath itself and out of the way. And there we go. One Civil War era sort of cartridge pouch.